Shalom with you today, Pastor Danny Rosen, with the word of Rosh Hashanah. Rosh is the head. Shana is the year. It's a significant year where we all of us entering. It's 5780. 5780. Remember, this is the year of greatness. It's the year of miraculous blessing, what God is preparing for all of us. Amen? And come to concentrate today for the message, what the Lord speak through my mouth, direct to your hearts. Amen? Can we pray first before we anything speak today? Heavenly Father, we magnify your name. This beautiful day, Lord, of Rosh Hashanah is the year of greatness, the year of blessing. For the Jewish celebrating, they call the year of mouth, really the year of language, the year of the word, the year of blessing. Lord, bless us today. Touch the every heart who listen this, the short word of Feast of Rosh Hashanah. And Lord, we want to always looking for you in this feast. Where are you in this feast, Abba? You are the first priority, Yeshua the Messiah. You are the first priority in our life. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Majestic King, the Prince of Peace. Adonai Adoneinu, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Malkeinu, El Elyon, Aviad, Sar Shalom, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Hallelujah. Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. Remember, the Lord's Feast, otherwise known as the Feast of Israel. The whole immense prophetic significance with great promises for God's people. They reveal the promise of Israel Messiah, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Adonai. And they also bring insight and understanding to God's calendar of appointed prophetic events. Yet, despite that in- inherent spiritual wealth, they have been sadly disregarded among most lay Christians in the churches for simple lack of understanding and knowledge. Today I want an introduction to give to you about the Lord's Feast. The biblical relevance of the Lord's Feast is sh- must be understood in, in mysterious for most because they are giving the law of Moses. My goal is for today is this series is to remove that veil of mystery and shed the Christian light of upon this beautiful and unique celebration of God has given to us. There are seven annual feasts which celebrating in order. Remember the first feast is Passover, a spring seed time. Second, Feast of Unleavened Bread, spring seed time. Third, the Feast of First Fruit, the spring of seed time. The Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks or Feast of Shavuot, is summer. Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpet, fall harvest. Yom Kippur, the fall harvest, and Sukkot, the feast of tabernacle of fall harvest. The ordinary of the seven annual feasts can be found in we see in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 4, which say, They are the feast of the Lord, even holy convocation, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. Amen. You know, many people say, oh, this is only for the Jewish people. But the we see is the Lord's feast, is the God's appointed feast. Amen? So we need to look Yeshua, the Messiah, in every feast. Messiah Yeshua, Christ Jesus, fulfilled the law of which the feasts are a part. It is important to note that the four spring and summer feasts have already been fulfilled by Him. And there are three fall feasts outstanding upon which the world anxiously wait. Thus the season of God's eternal calendar is clearly marked. As we progress through this area 
of understanding of the feast. We will discover the each of this feast with regard of the traditional observance and prophetic fulfillment. Amen. We will look at what God commanded in His Word, discover the spiritual significance, and learn how Messiah Yeshua fulfill each of the one. Today we concentrate specifically for Rosh Hashanah. A new beginning. We all love new beginnings, new start, new opportunities, new responsibility. They evoke acceptance and hope with sense of promises. We get to leave the old behind and look forward of the new. Our vision expands. Our horizon clear. We make resolutions for genuine change as we begin to make a plan for a fresh start. But therefore, when we think of the new year, we naturally consider it to be a new beginning. Israel, spiritual new year beginning in the spring with Passover. Whatever is interesting to note that Israel's civic year beginning and fall of the time of harvest. The Rosh Hashanah hall in numerous prophetic significance for the body of Messiah. As we prepare for the Lord's return, we will begin with Rosh Hashanah, beginning of Israel's civic year for following reasons. Rosh Hashanah is the next feast to be prophetically fulfilled by Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ. It make second coming of our Lord, for which the body of Messiah, Jesus Christ, is actively preparing. It also make new beginning, hence its appropriate title. Rosh Hashanah, being literally translated, means head of the year in Hebrew like I mentioned from the beginning. The Jewish New Year, which celebrating the first day of the seventh month of Tishrei. Always this in September and October. This time is fell in the end of September. The Hebrew calendar following lunar circle, which are of the key importance regarding of timing of this holy Celebration we see in Genesis chapter 1, 14 to 19. The beginning of each month is therefore dictated by the new moon. Rosh Hashanah is the only feast which begins on the first day of the month, where the moon is dark. All other feasts begin during their respective lunar circle when the moon is bright. We see also in traditional observance, speak unto children of Israel in Leviticus chapter 23, 24 to 25. Come we reading together in one spirit. Leviticus chapter 23, 24 to 25. Speak unto children of Israel, saying in the seventh month, the first day of the month, shall you have Shabbat, a memorable blowing of the trumpets and holy convocation. Yea, you, you shall not survive work train, but you shall offer an offering made by fire and totally to the Lord. We see the name Rosh Hashanah is not actually found in the scripture. The name given in Leviticus is Zichron Trua. Say after me, Zichron Trua which means memorable, a blasting, blowing. Zichron is remembering. Trua is also mean the blowing the trumpet. It's observed by the blowing of the trumpets of shafars. The shafar is made of allowing a ram horn being chosen for symbolism of deliverance when God brought ram to Abraham, which was we see in Genesis chapter 23, sorry, 22, 13. It was by this very ram which God has got so miraculously supply. 
that promised nation of Israel was saved. As Isaac lay there bound upon the altar, God Almighty loosed him from impending dead through this unique offering he provided. Oh, my brethren, is so much talk about this feast. That is significance of the shofar. If Isaac had died, there will have been no Israel. And the covenant promises God has, God had given Abraham who had been broken. God cannot break his promises. Therefore, the ram horn is object of worship and warfare. For the people of Israel in which God's faithfulness and deliverance is symbolized. The blowing of the shofar has four primary purposes for the nation of Israel. Please pay attention because I visit some countries. I don't want to mention. They blowing shofar without understanding. They using prayer shol to lead every man and woman without really understanding what is really meaning for us, for the Jewish people. Shofar for us is significant, warrior instrument. And we know to blow in the trumpet is also very, very important. Come we understanding today what is the shofar meaning for the nation of Israel and purpose. First, it gather a solemn assembly and to the Lord. Second, it sound an alarm for the battle. The third is announce of coronation of the king. It is interesting to know that King David, remember David in Hebrew, beloved, was anointed with horn filled with oil. 1 Samuel chapter 16. And four, it marks beginning and the ending of Shabbat. Rosh Hashanah is the first of two high holidays in the year. The second is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, which followed 10 days after the Rosh Hashanah. This 10 days span is knowing the Day of Av. This 10 days period is spent in solemn and deep reflection for the express purpose of repentance and preparation for the new year at hand. Therefore, the year prayer is rehearsed with careful and deliberate recollection in preparation for God's final judgment. During the, these 10 days, God's book of life is open, where each individual name is inscribed and judgment is rendered based on those findings. These 10 days are the very last opportunity granted for repentance, prayer to God's final judgment for that coming year. Therefore, it is common on the Rosh Hashanah to hear the Jewish greeting. Leshana Tova. Ti Kateinu. Which translate mean may you be inscribed in the book of life for good year. Rosh Hashanah is therefore celebrate with apples and honey, which are symbols of life, sweetness yet to come. Rosh Hashanah itself celebrate in high spring, which must feasting. Yet the 10 days of Av, which directly fo follow Rosh Hashanah and inscribe solemn. Fasting and prayer is commonly practices and secret sin are disclosed to God. During the days of Av, any and all festivals officially cease. There is strictly forbidden for the purpose of purification of the heart. Final judgment is coming, which official fall upon Yom Kippur, the second day, very highest holidays, day of the year. 
Yom Kippur is known as the Day of Atonement. When each individual means God has their judge. Let it be known that all judgment rendered on Yom Kippur is both swift and final. Rosh Hashanah is therefore made by great rejoicing, coupled with great fear of the Lord. Rosh Hashanah teach us that go forward, which must also be willing to look back. Prophetic fulfillment, my brethren. Now I want to talk about the prophetic fulfillment. Immediately after the tribulation of his days, shall the sun be darkened. We see in Matthew chapter 24, 30 to 31. And moon shall not give her light, light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and power of heaven shall be shake, and that shall appear of sin and soon of man, a son of man in heaven, that they shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the son of man coming in the cloud in heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with great sound of trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four wings from one end in heaven to the other wow this emphasize mine there we see the messiah christ perfect and most secure described in his fulfillment of Rosh Hashanah. Seven trumpets was sound, see in Revelation, so strong. But the seventh trumpet is not only see in the scripture, hence it's clear sacrifice of the sound of the Lamb, which Father alone knows. The seven trumpets directly reference Rated obscure. I believe this speaks clearly to the fact that we will not know the day of hour of his coming. But clearly, we are be church must to prepare. We'll indeed experience that for which prepare ourselves pure and holy. Thank you, Yeshua. For this preparation of your glory is coming. Rosh Hashanah is prophetically fulfilled in the return of the Messiah. His coming clearly marks a new beginning. On this day, we see in a new moon, oh hallelujah, a holy convocation of his people, millennial Shabbat, and the reign of Messiah Christ, which is believing. And, and unbelieving all the which will be gloriously fulfilled on Rosh Hashanah. This will be the time of great rejoicing of the people of God had great mourning for all the tribes of the air. They see him, the lion of tribe of Judah will come to rule and reign judgment with wrath to bring eternal salvation and deliverance of his people and to secure his eternal judgment and wrote upon the sin world which is not atoned by the blood of the Lamb. We see in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 from 6 to 12. This is the time of spiritual harvest when all soul will be resurrected to the life of death and a face of impending judgment of God which is final. My brethren, the seven trumpets, the blow. The seven trump trumpets sound with long blasts. We see the boat louder and longer than you any other. There are three types of blasts of the shofar, which are follow. First, say after me, tekia, 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 long, and wearing blasts, which is very loud and long. Second, Shefarim, a three short broken blasts. Trois, 
the nine part blast which remains weeping let it be understood that blowing of the shofar is not participate accurately it's not to be done upon the whim of spiritual tickle but we need to understand this is something God the Lord speak to us the blowing of shofar as act of war of wake up of resurrection of preparation of the new season a new time but we see traditionally the shofar is blowing by the priest there are appointed times which great reverence believers in yeshua the messiah jesus christ who are indeed priests of god shall understand the special significance of the shofar and the verge of accordingly shofar is traditionally blowing beginning with tkia following by shefarim trua and finalize in another tkia it's believed by most understanding students by god followers of christ the disciples who walk with the mentorship of yeshua the seven trumpets will sound with kia the blast my brethren this is the season this is the time we enter into tremendous season of 5780 this is the year of greatness is the year of miracles signs and wonders and i pray this year the god almighty the king of the glory the king of the universe the majestic savior and redeemer the abba father be answer all your prayers yes and amen god bless you my brethren shana tova happy new year rosh shana 5780 welcome to this new year with a new expectation with a new hope with a new blessing with a new joy with a new victory and a new beginning for everything what you decide today that's what you receive the angels be protect you no sicknesses no diseases no evil symptoms never come upon you in the name of majestic king the prince of peace and i bless you in the name of the father son and the holy spirit yeshua the messiah jesus christ yes and amen with you today pastor danny rosen with the word of rosh hashanah